So I'm looking at the calendar today, and I'm realizing Christmas is next weekend. And I'm thinking to myself, where in the world has this year gone? This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And I welcome you to the weekend edition of Truth to Ponder. And I'm your host, Bob Bierman. 2022, what a year this has been. And I don't even know where to begin. When we started out the calendar year of 2022, my wife and I were pretty much content in the life that we had. We had our our home in Florida, had our little place up in the mountains of Georgia that we had gotten a number of years ago when I was doing some ministry there, bought it on the cheap, as they would say, and put a lot of time and effort in and sold it to have the money to buy the place we now have in Virginia. And so we've been very blessed in that regard. But we realized at our age last year, maybe it's time to also make sure that we have a home that is closer to family, the one that'll be our retirement home. So this has been a whirlwind year of selling a property, getting it ready to sell, looking, trying to buy, trying to get everything closed and done. And here we are. And in the midst of all this, I have been suffering a bit of a health issue that some of you know that started getting worse, had surgery, another surgery upcoming. And so some days it's not easy to do the program, but I am thankful for the opportunity that I have to spend time with you each and every day. And as I begin today's program, I want to just share maybe a few Christmas memories and then talk about some of the topics on my mind and then reach out to you to get some of your thoughts on on the direction for this radio program. This time of year, I can remember as a child being so, so magical. That's the word that a lot of people like to use, especially for children. They don't fully comprehend everything, but they know there's something different going on. There's going to be presents under a tree in many cases. The music changes. People, at least back when I was growing up, were were more cheerful. People said, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, if you're in Long Island and in an area where there were a lot of Jewish people. This was my childhood. And as we got close to Christmas, We went out to look for that perfect Christmas tree. I can remember, I can remember going out at night to these places set up where they have these strings of white lights so you could see. And there in the cold, you'd be trying to find some some perfect Christmas tree that would come home and be put in its stand with water and whatever and, and let the boughs go down. And before you know it, you're starting to get ready to decorate that tree. Now, I I know we've changed traditions in my lifetime. I've seen it happen. When I came along in the tradition I was in, we didn't put the Christmas tree up like at Thanksgiving or sometime in October. It literally seems that they're they're pushing Christmas on us so so much earlier. I, I just prefer the more traditional Christmas where you you anticipated, you understood Advent and that incredible season of preparation. And as a youngster in a choir, a lot of extra practice because of the special music that would be occurring in the church. We never argued about going to church. We didn't cancel a church service because it was Christmas Day on a Sunday. Somehow we've decided that Christmas is no longer about Christ's birth so much as it is about family time and feeling good. And I find this very disturbing and and very troubling. We have substituted the world's Christmas for Christ's Christmas. And and I fear that it's going to have a, a major price to pay over time. I know it's my generation, baby boomers that are among the worst in allowing the devolving of Christmas and what it means. Putting aside the Advent hymns and not singing them as much, trying to rush 
the Christmas spirit into our church buildings with the lights and and the sound and the music. You know, it's like a one-month celebration of Christmas that ends on Christmas Day. And that's really just the beginning on Christmas Day of what Christmas is all about. In our American culture, and to a degree even in North America, Advent, the first Sunday in Advent, the four weeks before Christmas, used to be that time leading into Christmas. In the United States, with Thanksgiving falling on the last Thursday in the month of November, the Friday after Thanksgiving, the stores open, all the Christmas decorations are out, the Christmas presents the mad dash began. You didn't see in department stores when I was a kid any traces of Christmas until after Thanksgiving. In fact, when the stores closed on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, in major cities, the stores would even put paper, newspaper up in the window so you couldn't even see the display windows. And that Wednesday evening before Thanksgiving, they would close early back then too. People would get to work a little later to get everything ready for the day after Thanksgiving. And in some cases, there were some people that even came in Thanksgiving evening in some major department stores to put the last finishing touches on the countdown to Christmas. Today, Christmas kind of begins to ease in somewhere around going back to school. You know, in the end of August or September, you begin to see stuff out in some of the stores. Got to get ready. And a lot of things have changed over the years, too. Oh, yeah, we still have lights. We still have garland. We still have trees. We still have ornaments. But a lot of the outdoor decorations that I remember from my childhood are harder and harder to find. And I saw somebody mentioning it the other day. Now, here in our little house up in in Chilhowee, Virginia, I, I did break down and I did buy some LED lights to put outside. They kind of look like the old big ones from my my youth, but they were reasonable and I put them out there. And It's nice to at least feel the season a little bit again, and it's a rural area. And and I had it set up where I could have one more thing plugged in. And I went to look for it. I I bought the lights because I was at a place they were on sale, and I figured, yeah, this is is a good price. And this will take care of the need. So we, we got those. And I realized, you know, what I really need out in the front yard is a manger scene. So let me start looking around to see if I can get a manger scene. Now remember, this is a very conservative area where we live. A lot of churches. And so you go to the stores that would sell Christmas lights and what have you, looking for an outdoor manger scene. I couldn't find one. Might be able to order one online, but I realized it was going to get so close to Christmas, why bother this year? I may do it next year. I may not. I don't know. It depends on my health. And so you can buy the those things that blow up and you can have Santa and the reindeer and all and Frosty the snowman, but no manger seem to be found anywhere. And if you go to your big box stores, they're, I don't care if you're going to Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever store is near you, Sam's Club, I just didn't, maybe maybe where you are, you're finding them. I'd love to know. I just couldn't find them here. And I asked. They didn't have any. They, they weren't stocking any. And so the world has never really appreciated the Christ child for who the Christ child is. They tolerated the Christ child for, for generations. They tolerated him because it gave a reason to make money. They didn't mind the Christmas songs, Oh, Come Let Us Adore Him, Christ the Lord. But see, more and more, the world is moving away from Christ into basically a Santa Claus winter solstice celebration. 
and and we look at what happens in our schools. They don't want to talk about a Christmas break. It's it's a winter break. It's a spring break. Can't talk about Easter. Can't talk about Christmas. These things are now verboten. And we wonder, as we have lost our moral compass, why we see some of the strangeness in the world that we see today because the world has turned its back on the Christ child. They don't even pretend to have respect and honor any longer. Saw a news story. And it came out of Los Angeles, California. And there, there a school official had invited a high school choir to sing at his Christmas party at his home. Which was basically had a dirty Santa. It was a, shall we say, X-rated affair with alcohol. This is a school administrator offering those under 21 alcohol to boot. This is where our Christmas has decayed to. Thankfully, the guy knew better when the word got out. He He's no longer with the school board. But he really believed he could get away with it and nobody would care. And these are the people that are running our public schools in many places. Look at, look at what happened in Loudoun County in the northern part of Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C., the District of, well, Columbia. I'm going to try to be in a charitable mood today. Where that school board is so into the latest debauchery for, I'm trying to find a word, transgenderism, yes. If a young man decides he wants to be a girl and wear a dress, let him do it and let him even use the girl's restroom. And because of that stupidity, because of that moral and intellectual bankruptcy, let alone spiritual bankruptcy, of that school board and of the administration, two young girls were raped. And the school tried to cover it all up. That's the reason that Virginia actually does have a Republican governor Terry McAuliffe probably would have won, except he stepped on it when he said, parents really have no business knowing anything about what the public schools do with your kids. And that stirred up enough parents that normally would have voted Democrat because they're they're liberal on a number of social issues. They don't want to be thought of as racist or bigots or something. They, They believe that lie. And Terry McAuliffe lost. And so what was beginning to happen in Loudoun County eventually got exposed, a grand jury and panel to investigate. Now, I, I got a kick last week when the preliminary report came out and and the school administrators at, at that time in Loudoun County were all thrilled that there were no criminal charges of any kind. See, we we didn't do anything that wrong. But we're a little bit upset with this one guy that, you know, didn't keep everybody informed, so they asked for his resignation, and they thought they could sweep the rest of this under the rug. What happened? I think I said it on the radio program last week. That jury has not been disbanded, so don't count your chickens before they hatched. And sure enough, a week later, not even a week later, the first set of indictments came out. Misdemeanor in one case, felony in another for... Uh, for lying. So it's still not over in Loudoun County. They may wish it was. It was criminal. But it's not just Loudoun County. It's everywhere. I saw something recently that I, I found fascinating. How much has the population of students and teachers grown over the past, let's say, 20 years? You'll You'll see increases of like, you know, 10, 11, 12%. But in terms of administrators, it's up almost 100%. And we've been adding more and more layers of administrators that come in to operate our schools, that come out of these woke colleges and universities. And this is how our children's minds are captured in the public schools. So 
As I look at this year behind us, Christmas ahead of us next week, a new year, the week after that, I just want to take a little bit of time on the beginning of this program to just talk about a couple of more things I need to share with you. Like I say, I'm thanking all of you for praying for the health situation that I'm dealing with. And, you know, some days are really bad. Some days are not bad. I'm getting through today. Tomorrow may be worse. Tomorrow may be better. I don't, I never know. But I want to thank you for your prayers, and I want to thank you for supporting me and the work that we do here. Truth to ponder, we're not some big, well-funded ministry. I don't have a staff of writers and researchers. Other places do. Other places have video editors, and they... They need a lot of financial support to stay, well, producing their video cast or their podcast, and in some cases, like this, a radio program. I'm just a small voice you know, crying out in the wilderness. And in many ways, as we're going into Christmas, it's we are in a perpetual advent if you're a Christian. We're, we're waiting for the second coming of Christ. We're going to remember his first coming next week, but we are always anticipating his second coming. And so we've been doing this program. It started in 2020, and I didn't know how long it would last. I didn't know how this pandemic was going to play out or how the election of 2020. Then we got into 2021, and then now 2022 is going to be behind us, and we're going to be going into 2023, God willing, in like two weeks. And so I asked my Lord, I said, you know, what, Lord, what do you want me to do? What are you laying on my heart? When we started this program, I started it based upon what I had learned in my work in emergency management. And that was some critical work. And there were things that were just not getting out there. The reason I left that kind of work, I had been called out of retirement, asked to help. I started seeing a very strange narrative. Things were not adding up, and I knew that some people were out and out lying. And it was getting worse and worse. And very few people were willing to talk about it. And so we started this program not knowing if it would survive a month or two or three, but here we are. And there have been times over these two and a half years, I guess, that I've wondered, should I keep doing it or not? And the answer always comes back, you know, keep going a little longer, keep going a little longer. But one thing that has been on my mind of late is, is getting away from just being the bad news bearer. I don't need to be the bad news bearer. I, I mean, there, there's plenty of people that do a better job of scaring you, terrifying you, of telling you everything that's wrong. I go to my email every day, and I'm signed up for a lot of stuff that I'm beginning to think I don't need to be signed up to read. And then I get a lot of advertisements in there like, you know, it's the end of the dollar. It's the end of this. It's the end of that. And it's a word from our sponsor, like you need to buy this to be protected from that. And, and we've developed this cottage industry, so to speak, of protecting ourselves from the difficult times ahead. And there are a lot of people making a lot of money. And, and I don't. This radio program has got a handful of listeners on shortwave. Be nice if I was on domestic radio. Be nice if I was one of those. It's funny. In looking at the stats, somebody explain, explained to me that as a podcast, I'm actually in the top 50 in the, in the United States, which is not saying much because only outside of a handful of podcasts that have the mega thousands or hundreds of thousands of of listeners each day. You know, mine is just a small number, but it sure beats having no listeners, which is how many podcasts end up, or just one or two. But I'm thankful for what God has given me. But then I, I have to ask the question, am I, am I du what am I duplicating out there that I don't need to be spending as much time duplicating? 
What do I need to be talking about to help you in your day-to-day life in getting through this? A, A lot of ministries talk about the advent of our Lord, the second coming. And I think I need to be doing more of that and putting it in the light of God's word, in the light of also the news that we see, the world that is changing and how it how it stacks up. One of the things I don't want to do, and, and for those that have listened for any length of time, sure, I can I can share stories with you of the bizarre. I can share stories with you that may put you into fear. And that's not my goal. I don't need to scare you into God's kingdom. But I need you to be aware of what is going on. The church of my youth is not the same church that I'm seeing today. Christians are getting lazy. They're they're buying into some really horrifically bad theology. That Jesus wants you to feel good about yourself. Be content, be happy, be wealthy. He never said that. You can't find that in the word of God. Follow me and I'll make you rich, wealthy, and happy with a new car and great self-esteem. And the people around you will think highly of you. No, Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. You'll be despised of many. St. Paul goes, I got shipwrecked. I had been beaten within one strike of my life. We, we, we want this happy child Jesus that stays the child Jesus that talks about love and peace and, and serenity and good feelings, great joy, but never the mission and ministry of Christ to redeem the world. That's the part they don't want to talk about anymore. And as we've ceased talking about redemption, the demons and their neo-pagan religions that have been around since four, five thousand, six thousand 6,000 years ago rear their ugly head in worshiping the earth rather than the creator of this earth. In putting fear over the things we're doing to this earth that God has created. And sacrificing, sacrificing to the gods of this world and rejecting the God that created this world. It's warfare. It's spiritual warfare. And so for my wife and I at this time of the year, we have some decorations out. We finally got the tree up early for us or in my tradition because the 12 days of Christmas begin Christmas Day, not the 12 days before. Yeah, the world wants to get that tree out of the house like the 26th or even the night of the 25th. Start taking the ornaments off. We're moving on to something else. And we got to move away from from Bethlehem as fast as we possibly can. We need to spend time focusing on what bought Jesus to this world and to the city of Bethlehem. And what his mission and ministry were. I learned it as a child. And it was a part of me, even in the days that I I floundered, in the days that I may have not been the servant of God that I should have been by by a long stretch. Those traditions and those important things were still a part of who I am and they were a part of my being. And I'm thankful for the upbringing that I had to be raised in the fear and admonition of the Lord. So I look at this particular radio program, the one that I come here to do with you each and and every day, Monday through Friday. And I'm going to ask you the question, what should we be focusing upon on this radio program in the year 2023? I've made it clear that we're not going to fix anything in this nation simply at the ballot box. The ballot box is a reflection of who we are. And if people haven't figured that out, they're going to be voting for things that are meaningless to you and I, but meaningful to those that are trying to capture the hearts and minds of our young people. 
I love this time of year because it gives us a little time to pause. The world may not want to fully pause. The world may want one of those Christmas parties. And what a sacrilege that is that that administrator in Los Angeles County did bringing the choir of his school in for a pretty much dirty Santa party with sexual innuendo. Thankfully, the parents, even in Los Angeles, were mad. And the guy is no longer with the schools. But how many others are in the schools that are like that? So, yes, this program will focus on some of the stories you may have heard, some you may not have heard. But I really believe that the most important thing I can do is empower us to be prepared for the things yet to come. If you think it's bad now, it's going to get worse. But as Christians, we don't live in fear. We can still live in joy, in peace. Yeah, we can, no matter what should come our way. And maybe it's being able to put the put the news of the world into the perspective of God's word, what the prophets have said, and to recognize that we are living, that we are living in a very unprecedented time. Now, like I've said many a time on this program, please understand, there have always been difficult times. World War II, good example. The Great Plague. You can go across the history of this world and there have been some incredibly horrid times. I believe what we're about to face is unprecedented, at least in our lifetimes. And I'm one of those that believe that Jesus could return in my lifetime. Even with my health situation, if it goes bad, I don't live that long, it still could happen in my lifetime. Come thou long expected Jesus. I wanted to just thank you for your prayers. And so, like I say, some days for me, you know, preparing this program are not as easy as others. Today is one of those difficult days. But I'll take a break here in a moment and then come back and share some more. But I'd love to hear from you before the end of the year, if I could. Would you let me know that you listen? Number one, you can use my personal email address. Nobody else reads it but me. That's Bob at Truth, the number two ponder.com. Bob at Truth, the number two ponder.com. I'd love to know how you listen. Podcast, shortwave, what station, what time, what frequency. And also, if this program has been a blessing to you. If it has, let me know. If you can, I know it's not easy at this time of the year. If you can help us financially, it would mean so much as we go into 2023. I'll be here for a while. Just keep me in your prayers. Our mailing address is very simple. Make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio. Ancient Word Radio. Mailing address is Truth to Ponder. Truth to Ponder. P.O. Box 510. P.O. Box 510. Chilhowee, Virginia. C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E. P.O. Box 510. Chilhowee, Virginia. And the zip code in Chilhowee is 24319. That's 24319. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. Messiah's Hanukkah. Shalom Aleichem. This is Jonathan Kahn, the nice Jewish boy, your Jewish connection, bringing you the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus. Now get your pen out as fast as you can so you don't miss out on receiving a special free gift you're going to get and love in a moment. Did you know that Hanukkah, the festival of lights, never appears in the Hebrew scriptures, only in the New Testament? That's right. John 10, 22 says, then came the feast of dedication. Well, it was winter. That's Hanukkah. The word dedication in Hebrew is Hanukkah. And it says Messiah, Yeshua, was in the temple courts. He's walking along the colonnade of Solomon. It's Hanukkah. There are oil lights all around, the Feast of Lights. And the Jewish people gather around. They say, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you're Messiah, tell us plainly. And he answers, I did tell you, but you didn't believe me. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me. Well, what he's saying is, listen, I did tell you, I am the Messiah. The miracles I do speak for me. You see, it's the Feast of Lights. Now, a light doesn't have to wear a sign or a name tag. The light bears witness of what it is. So with Messiah, he's the light of the world. The radiance of his life bears witness and says who he is. And if you are 
his. If you belong to him, you're to be a little version of him. You follow him. You're to be a light too. How will people know you're a light? Well, because you, you put on a name tag that says, I'm a light. Not really, but by the radiance of God in you. They'll know you by the light, the light, by your love. They'll know you the light, by your joy, by your good works, by your preaching, by the gospel. They'll know you are a light by your life. And if you don't have that, it doesn't matter how much you say. So let your light shine before heaven. They may see your good works and glorify God. The light of God is not a candle, but a life on fire for him. Happy Hanukkah, my friend. Now, want more and more of these two? Well, here's the free gift for you. The mystery of the temple doors. You'll love it. And sapphires with the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus and more teachings and special teachings and updates on Israel, world events and prophecy and the secrets of strength and victory. How do you get these gifts free? Easy. Just remember Jesus' real Hebrew name, Yeshua, and you dial it. That's it. So just dial 1-800-YESHUA-1. You will be blessed, but call now. That's 1-800-YESHUA-1. I invite you to join me in bringing salvation, the light back to God's ancient nation Israel and the unreached peoples on five continents with over a billion people. It's amazing. You can imagine blanketing the world with the gospel. Through shortwave radio, we do it every week and you can be part. It's incredible. Just call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's Y-E-S-H-U-A-1. Now you can write me direct. Here's how. Just write to the nice Jewish boy, Box 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. It's a nice Jewish boy, 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. Well, till next time, this is Jonathan Kahn saying, shine your light, my friend, arise and shine, because Messiah has come, and he's the Or HaOlam, the light of the world. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And I welcome you back to part two of our weekend edition of Truth to Ponder. And I'm your host, Bob Bierman. Very quickly, I want to thank all of you that have actually sent me some Christmas cards. It means a lot. You know, in my life, and I'll, I'll talk about this maybe one day next week or sometime soon, a little bit of what I've been through and some of the great disappointments, but some of the great blessings that I've had as well. And to be where I'm at at this point in my life and to have some family still around and to have new friends because of this radio program, it humbles me. So a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now this this time as we get closer to Christmas, I want to share a couple of thoughts, and and I want to bring back something that I I shared a number of years ago uh, with a congregation. Yeah, there are times, times, and this is one of them, that I'm, I'm glad that I have a few recordings left of some things that I've shared with churches before. Have you ever wondered about the story of Jesus and why he was born in the way that he was, where he was, and when he was? There are, there are songs out there like, Mary, did you know? Yeah, she knew. Just just so you know, she knew. And everything about Jesus' birth fulfilled prophecy, but also, if you dig a little deeper, it tells a story unto itself that needs to be seen about Jesus and why Bethlehem, why, when, and the circumstances, all of it. If you dig a little bit deeper into that story, of that first Christmas. By the way, I don't want to burst your bubble. The wise men didn't show up for another almost two years. So this was a a big deal for the shepherds and a handful of people when he did come and in the humble way that he arrived. And when you begin to understand all of it combined together, it really, it really shows God's providence and it really does show his plan for you and for I, and for all those that love the Lord. So I'm going to take you back about five years ago to tell you more about Christmas, the Lamb of God, and Bethlehem. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. may be seated. First, a little thank you on the part of Lori and I. We had a good chance to get away for a few days. We had the opportunity to visit a church 
that I have preached in a few times up in northeast Georgia, the Chapel of Sky Valley. It's just such a beautiful area up around, as you probably know, thousands of feet, up to 3,000 feet above sea level. The, the air was, I think Lori described it as crispy and, and nice that morning. At least it wasn't snowing or ice, which could happen at any time in those mountains. And, and it was fun to be in that church. And I think of the times over the last seven or eight years that I preached there. The last time, and I reminded the congregation, the last time I came to preach there, none of them were there. They didn't show. What had happened was I was living about an hour and 20 minutes away from there in South Carolina, and nobody bothered to call me to tell me that it was snowing up there and they were canceling services. So I got in my car and drove all the way to the church into the mountains with no problem. And I got there, and there's nobody there, the door is locked, and I'm thinking, okay, am I that early? Did the time change? And then all of a sudden, a couple of people came by that were with the church, and uh, they were just taking a walk and explained to me that, oh, church was canceled because we had this four or five inches of snow. And I said, well, okay. And I said, I'm here. So we, a few of us had church outside in that nice cold air. And that was the last time that I preached there until this past Sunday. And, and I, I really enjoyed the time. It's a little bit different than your typical church that I'm used to. It's kind of a cross between what we do here and a community church and a most beautiful building and setting uh, that you can imagine. And, and I, I think that on our Facebook pages, we've posted some pictures of our time up there. So we, I want to thank you, you know, as we had our chance to get away Today, I want to direct this brief sermon toward the prophecies contained, as we heard one of them today, in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, all throughout Isaiah, there are these little bits, you know, out of the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a conversation that Isaiah may be having with somebody on something in the writing. All of a sudden, he starts talking about something that seems unrelated, and then he's back to what he's talking about. And he's getting these, I really believe, these glimpses from the Holy Spirit. These glimpses of things. And Isaiah is a prophet and his accuracy has been 100%. And so he's dropping these little tidbits. And I'm thinking of several. And, and when, when Handel wrote the Messiah, he spent a lot of time in the book of Isaiah, looking at the prophecies and a number of the beautiful melodies in the Messiah are from the prophecies contained in the book of Isaiah. We heard one today, but there are several others that always come to mind, and I want to share these. For example, in chapter 40, now we were in chapter 9 today, and here all the way in chapter 40, you know, he's talking about Hezekiah and, and prior, there, there are things that are going on. And he's talking about the Babylonian captivity that was yet to come, which is long before Jesus is going to appear. And suddenly Isaiah writes, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received the Lord's hand double for her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Well, even Handel used that comfort, comfort ye my people. And there is the foreshadowing of John the Baptist, the one that will be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Two weeks ago when we were here, we heard about that 
in the gospel, or was that last Sunday? I can't remember. They all kind of run together, you know, about are you the one? Are you know, John? Are, are you the John saying Jesus? Are you the one that I'm I'm here for, or am I to look for another? And the answer is I am the one. I am who I am. I am the one sent of the Father. You can go throughout this book of Isaiah and you could literally just go through the pages and you could probably almost stop anywhere and find even more. And the key of the house of David will I lay on his shoulder so he shall open and none shall shut and he shall shut and none shall open. That's from Isaiah 22, verse 22. I, I mean, I am always fascinated when I look at this book of Isaiah and realize just how many times Jesus is mentioned and he is seen. Chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. We heard that referred to in today's gospel. All throughout this book of Isaiah are these prophecies that lead us to Jesus Christ and his arrival of the house and lineage of David. And I remember reading an article several years ago that looked at all the prophecies surrounding Jesus Christ and what the statistical odds would be for one person to fulfill all of the prophecies contained in the Old Testament. And the number was staggering, one in trillions, to be possible that one person could be at that point in time of this, of that, of the other. It's incredible, the statistical odds against it. But most important, most important to me, when I, I look at how God's plan played out for you and I in Jesus Christ that, like I say, all throughout the Old Testament, and not just Isaiah, others are giving these foreshadowings of who Jesus Christ is, what his mission will be, and his purpose will be. Now, in the time that Jesus came, it had been a long time since the first prophecies had been given. And the Messiah that the Jews were expecting was going to be a conquering and vicious leader to push the Romans out. Remember, the Jewish people had been through a tremendous amount of angst and anxiety over the last couple of thousand years prior to getting to this point with Jesus Christ. They've been in captivity. They have been in bondage. They have been in Egypt. They've been everywhere. And they always got there because they would turn their back on God. They would cease to obey his commandments. They would cease to live for him. And so God, God didn't punish him directly. I believe what God does and what he does to you and I today, I'm here to give you my help. You don't want it. You're on your own. You're on your own. And when they're on their own and God's hand of protection is gone, they get conquered, they get enslaved, and this could go on for 70 years, 100 years, whatever, and then until they cry out to God and say, Lord, how long do we have to keep enduring this? And then God's hand of blessing opens up again, and over and over and over again, he establishes a new covenant with his people. He is merciful by his very nature. God's way of punishing us at times is not that he punishes us, but he just says, fine, you're on your own for a while. You're on your own. Do it your way. And after you've done it your way for a while, just give me a call when you're ready and we'll talk. And see, that's the nature of the God that we serve, his, his outstanding forgiveness. And all through these messages that Isaiah is laying out for us in the book of Isaiah, we are seeing this person born of a virgin 
that we say in the creed then suffers under Pontius Pilate, the most important message of Christmas is not his birth. That's the beginning of the story. And for us, for us in America today, Christmas is just the birth and that's the end of it as far as the world's concerned. They don't want to hear about the miracle worker, the one that suffered on the cross, died, the one that can raise from the dead and heal. They don't want to hear about that guy. The babe is fine. Leave it there. Leave it there. We don't want to hear anymore. We, and even that's becoming contentious. We don't even want to hear about the babe anymore. You look at who this person in Jesus Christ is foretold by the prophets. Now, there's one thing I, I want to share with you. And I remember reading this a couple of years ago, and I've done a little bit of research on this to kind of make sure, you know, when you see certain stories, it's, you know, kind of like, gee, that sounds great, but is it really true? Is there any possibility of truth in some of the things you read? And when I read this, it was fascinating, it was believable, but I needed to do a little bit more research to see if it was even probable. And while I cannot give you any certainty that it's 100% that it, it did happen this way, the probability that it could be is extremely high, and I have a good confidence in sharing this. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, as foretold by the prophets. Now, at the time they talked about Bethlehem, the city of David, in a time when the temple was in ruins, at one point, by the time Jesus comes into play and Mary is carrying Jesus, this little town of Bethlehem has become something, though rather small, extremely important that didn't exist at the time of the prophecies. See, the temple of Solomon had the sacrifices for sin. And what did they use for the sacrifices? Lambs. And these lambs had to be spotless and without blemish. Where were these lambs raised? In Bethlehem, just a, just a few miles down the road from Jerusalem. Now, we are always given this image, and I guarantee you that we'll probably have one here in this church, like every church has, the scene of the manger. And we're going to see that, you know, one of the most inaccurate Christmas carols may very well be away in the manger where it says the cattle are lowing, the poor baby wakes. There were probably no cattle there. Let me tell you why. Because in the Bible, there is a reference to the Tower of the Shepherds in the Old Testament. The Tower of the Shepherds was located in Bethlehem. It was where the birthing lambs were taken to keep them safe. And in this so-called stable, is where these lambs were born. And when these lambs were born, so they wouldn't injure themselves, they were immediately wrapped in swaddling clothes. How about that? It is very likely that as Mary and Joseph came as they were called to be to Jerusalem, well, actually to Bethlehem in this case, just down from Jerusalem, that there was no room in any of the established inns between Jerusalem, where a lot of people were coming, and there's probably nothing of any consequence in Bethlehem, except this one building out there, the Tower of the Shepherds, where the shepherds stayed to raise their flock and protect them and there were all the lambs that were ever sacrificed in the temple were born, is born the Lamb of God. Now think about that for a moment. Like I say, when I read this analogy, I'm going, this is too good. And then I got deeper into it, I'm going, this is very real. Because that tower does exist, that place was Bethlehem. It is very likely. Now add that to the incredible odds of who Jesus Christ is to then be born among 
the spotless lambs. He truly is the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God that came to take away the sins of the world. In everything Jesus ever did in his life and in his ministry, in every prophecy given in the Old Testament, particularly in Isaiah as we heard today, he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords without the shadow in my heart of a doubt. Christmas is the beginning of the message of the greatest news that ever was given unto mankind. The shepherds said it when they heard it from the angels. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the King. Heavenly Father, as we meditate on your word and look at the prophecies that you've given us, Lord, I know there are times we even doubt our own faith. We even challenge the things that we read and, and wonder if the world is right. But then subtly and by the power of your Holy Spirit, we are drawn again into your word and recognize and see the incredibleness of what you have given us that mathematically is beyond our imagination, but you fulfill it and you continue to fulfill your word. Strengthen us in our faith and let us cling and hold on to that precious land that you have given us that will take away our sin and bring us unto eternal life with you. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now behold the Lamb oh, oh. The precious Lamb of God Yes, He is Born into sin and I may live again I can live again The precious Lamb
hope today's message to close out our weekend edition meant something to you. Maybe you learned something. Maybe it helped you understand Christmas and all of this season a little bit better. And I want to thank all of you that have listened during this year of 2022. We've got another week to go. And I'd love to hear from you before the end of this year. Actually, two weeks before we close out the year 2022. And I'm amazed how fast this year has gone by. They say as you get older, the years, they fly by faster and they're very true. It seems like we just got 2022 underway with some hope, another year of broadcasting, a change of address, and then a lot of challenges as well. I know many of you have felt the challenge of the economy. Many of you, like me, are going through some health issue and my prayers are with you and I'm so appreciative that yours are with me. I want to use the time that God has given me and this opportunity and this platform that I am privileged to be upon to give God all the glory in all that I do. I need your suggestions of what this program needs to be. I'd like to see it grow in 2023. Maybe it's time to go to the next level. I don't know. But I want to do whatever God would have me to do. If you believe in the ministry, you can support us from our website, by the way, truththenumber2ponder.com, truththenumber2ponder.com. If you prefer, you can use a check or money order made out to Ancient Word Radio. Ancient Word Radio mailing address is Post Office Box 510, P.O. Box 510. The city is Chilhowie, C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E, Chilhowie, Virginia. And the zip code in Chilhowie is 24319, P.O. Box 510, Chilhowie, Virginia, zip code 24319. That's 24319. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, Truth, the number two, and the word ponder.com. That's Truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to Ponder, shining the light of truth in a darkening world.